for, uh, for all the uh, speaker. Uh, what do you think about uh, social skill training for uh, adult uh, with autism and uh, mental retardation? So what the difference uh, for you uh, between the, the training, uh, uh, between uh, training for uh, people with mental retardation, for example, with the mild mental retardation and uh, uh, people uh, without mental retardation? I don't know uh, if uh, there are uh, some research about this. In the research I've seen, most of the research is focused on higher functioning individuals. I think there's some um, literature on social skills training, not in group formats for lower functioning individuals, but most of the individuals have normal to above normal intelligence. I think at the same time, I don't think that it, individuals with intellectual disability should be excluded from group activities. It's just not something that, to my knowledge, has been researched or published yet. I think just from my experience in practice, the focus is more on more what you might call life skills and self-care skills for, for that group. That would just be my experience um, and at a more foundation level, perhaps, than some of the intricacies of relationships and employment and such that have been discussed by other speakers. That would be my experience from previous practice. Yes. Uh, what I noticed in the Netherlands is that uh, uh, within the group of uh, higher functional autists, there are some people who uh, want to cultivate their autism and their autistic way of living. And uh, do you come across these people also in your social uh, skills uh, groups? Because that must be quite difficult. Because they don't want to learn to uh, behave more normal. They see it as a right to be autistic. Sorry, mixed there. Uh, I meet that, and uh, I, I remember one woman who said, "Well, I talk a lot." And when I enter uh, a workplace, of course, everyone should respect me talking and talking in <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I mean, you have to use the group then to regulate a bit the reality, yes, because they meet reality and it would be easier then to discuss this we, as we did in the group than that they just meet it when they are sacked from work as they will be. But uh, she was very strong in uh, that's my right and everyone should respect me. <laughs> uh, so, and the groups might be some nurturing of these uh, ways of behavior you know, or, or thinking, of course. So as a leader, you, of course, have to try to <laughs> modify it. And the best way is to help other group members uh, confront them with reality and make a climate that this is not dangerous and it should be discussed. And then it will, I think. Hello. I would like to ask a question of um, uh, Brian Reichhoff. Um, I come from the National Autistic Society in Sweden, and um, I know about your social skill groups in, in the United States. You have had them for a long time. Uh, I want to ask you, do you have social skill groups for adults? Because I think that would make a very big difference with the results. Uh, social skills uh, become very apparent when uh, we are talking about adults. And the adults themselves uh, notice that 
they are different from others and will find, will want to find answers for those questions and are trying to adapt to the uh, society in whole, first in adult age. So I think that's very diff will be quite big difference in the results. In the research that's been published, very little has been published on adults. Um, one of the articles that comes to mind is Gary Mezabov's 1984-85 article. Um, the articles I've seen on adult groups are more of a support group format than a teaching specific skill format. And the review I did today looked more at the skill teaching groups. Um, th that being said, I think there's a dearth of research on adults and autism, and I think it's an area that needs to be better developed. Thank you. Could I maybe just add, it's, it's tangential, it's not directly related, but my, my day job is that I um, teach on a multi-professional postgraduate course in autism, and it, it started off aimed at all the different professions who might be involved in care, support, or education. But the last, I'd say, three to five years, we have an increasing number of adults, particularly with Asperger's syndrome, who choose to study autism in an academic way. And that's really interesting. And part of the nice thing for me is to see um, a kind of journey of discovery in a sort of almost intellectual way. It's kind of um, through academic engagement with autism, they are seeing reflections um, for themselves. and. We have recently developed an online course and more people with Asperger's syndrome are availing themselves of that and their comments are extremely insightful and they're also be very beneficial for the other course participants. And some people can't uh, go the distance with it, they're not ready for it and they only find out they're not ready for it once they start. But we've had a couple of people who have found um, almost intellectualizing the topic has helped them understand themselves better. So it's a different approach again. That's our uh, experience also in Sweden. In my experience, a lot of the work that's going on around social skills training, which is not a phrase I particularly like, it feels a bit patronizing, but even still, that's what it's called, tends to be on the teaching of specific skills in specific contexts. Now, with that, you've got the problem of generalization. I wonder if anyone on the panel is aware of any work going on <clears throat> to help people with some of the fundamental stuff that's perhaps underlying that, like theory of mind, or mentalizing, or central coherence. Is anyone aware of any work that's going on targeting that level? I don't know if I get you right. You're asking if you if you do mentalizing in this group? Yeah. Um, we do it in discussion rounds. So we uh, talk about situations and uh, well, what the people might think in this situation and the different perspectives and then very autobiographic. And it's very, very helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And partly what I um, told about narrative training also included some elements of mentalizing because if you have to recognize um, protagonist intentions, you have to think about his mental states. So it was uh, part of the training I, I told about. And also, uh, well, I, I would think um, it a vital element. Uh, we also try to integrate it into the uh, social skills group. However, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes um, persons with Asperger syndrome, try, when they know the concept of mentalizing and um, a theory of mind, they try to learn it by themselves. Uh, I once encountered a person who just searched in, in the internet the tests of theory of mind so that he could learn it and claim that he has no deficits in that field and so that he is not Asperger's because he, this was his special topic that he is not Asperger's, that he has nonverbal learning disabilities, which he had not. So th this, is, this is sometimes tricky, but uh, I think it's very necessary. 
There have been a few studies that have looked at teaching theory of mind. Um, one of the things I think raises, I think you talked a little bit about generalization. Many of the individuals are able to learn the theory of mind tasks within the social skills group setting. There's less conclusive evidence that they're able to take that knowledge they gained within the group setting and apply it to real life, everyday situations. So it, there's been very little work, but the work that has been done raises a question whether or not they're really able to apply it after they learn how to do it within the group context. to comment in addition that uh, one thing is to learn theory of mind and all that in in theory as you said the other thing is generalization to real life situation the third point is how does this work when they are under stress they are very vulnerable to stress we know and even we when we are very stressed all of us will lack some theory of mind and uh, it will even worsen. And the everyday life of a person with autism or Asperger's syndrome is full of stressful situations. And I think we should deal more with that. <laughs>